There was one other story this week that uh, involved uh, Chicago, or I should say, uh, Jesse Jackson. Bob Woodward's from Chicago. Well, I know. <laughs> I'm sorry, go ahead. Um, okay, I'm, I'm done with that joke. You had uh, Robin Kelly win of the seat in a special election. Jesse Jackson Jr. Uh, resigned um, uh, because of, well, uh, criminal activity, essentially, and, uh, and other issues that he had. But uh, so this was a, this is a, a solidly blue district. So it really was about the, um, the Democratic primary um, with the, with the uh, full disclosure that uh, you work for Mayors Against Gun Violence, not the organization that was involved in that race, but obviously um, a PAC that was... Mayor, Mayor Bloomberg is, is, a, is one of the two co-chairs of Mayors Against Legal Guns, yes, Mayor Menino of Boston uh, also, right. and, and, and it's Mayor Bloomberg's super PAC, the independence PAC, that put $2.2 in there, yes. Right, and, okay, respect. so just, it, 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 the, this changed the outcome of that race, and it was pivoted on uh, the the other uh, Democrat in this race who could have won because it was a wide open field. You only needed about 30, 33 percent to win uh, at that point. Uh, that that uh, other candidate, um, uh, Haverly, I think it was, um, uh, Halverson, Debbie Halverson, yes. she had an A rating from the NRA, and that ended up basically being a tire around her neck that uh, made it impossible for her to win. Right, and let's let's explain why this is important. Because people say, "Oh, you know, vast majority Democratic district, particularly a lot of it's African American." And so, we just got one deal? minute. Here's, here's the big deal: Debbie Halverson had run against Jesse Jackson Jr. and lost in the primary in 2010. She came into this thing, or 2012. She came into this thing with a huge lead. She's a former congresswoman. She has higher name recognition. She had actually been endorsed in both of her races: the one she won and the one in 2008, the one she lost in 2010 by the NRA. Okay, over her Republican opponent. So she's one of those Democrats that's that crazy. Yeah. All right, and there are some rural aspects to this reconfigured district. Uh, and and in the end, sure, she would he would be at a disadvantage in terms of voters. But the NRA said, claims they didn't do anything in there. Yes, they did. They sent out mailers at the end. And why did they not do anything else? Because they knew they would lose. That's why they didn't do anything else. In the end, not just Mayor Bloomberg's super PAC, but a group of a group of progressive organizations and groups from Daily. Coast to Credo Mobile, yep. uh, you know, to who am I thinking of? DFA, I think the P Triple C, and others who you, I know, folks you have on this show, made this race a priority, and it, as importantly to someone like me, made the gun issue a priority, and has realized, as I've been yelling on your show for way too long, and have annoyed probably almost everyone, even your last listener, if I scared them away on it, that this was an issue that would be a winner. That this is an issue that, when that we, if you look at the changing demographics, the way gay marriage has become a winner uh, just in eight or ten years now, and, and the way standing up for contraception and abortion rights has become a winner, um, uh, standing up for immigration reform has become a winner. In addition to all that, standing up for passing gun safety has become a winner. And there, yes, there will be exceptions, Al- you know, parts of Alabama right. or Utah, no. But in most swing states, I mean, when polls come out that show in, in, in Kentucky that 65 percent of voters post-Newtown favor registration of guns and almost 80 percent favor closing the gun show loophole, things have changed. It's going to be a and fascinating dynamic. In the, in the coming uh, days, I hope to have um, somebody on from Credo to talk about this, too, because I think the implication to this, um, you know, very often, very often, not always, but an A rating from the NRA comes with a whole other bucket full of positions, essentially, that are going to, that are going to have uh, implications for... I'll tell you in two seconds progressive- the interesting race to watch on this, if you have it. Yes. You have two more seconds. Go. The interesting race to watch will be Susan Collins up in Maine. Okay. Because it's a Democratic state. She's going to be vulnerable, but she's worried about being challenged from the Tea Party right. We'll see. Because if she does do that, if she moves to her right to try to head stuff off and doesn't support reasonable gun control measures, you're going to see that that's going to be an issue that she's going to have her butt kicked with up there. It'll, it'll, Mark it's going to be interesting. Cliff Schechter's words, ladies and gentlemen. Cliff, thank you so much. <laughs>